Last week, Brian Stoffel announced that he was selling his position in DocuSign. Why? He wanted to invest that capital in other businesses that he had more conviction in. So what stocks is he going to be buying with that capital? We'll tell you next. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Thanks to YCharts for sponsoring this video. All right, Brian, tell us, what is stock number one? Stock number one is Airbnb, which trades under the ticker symbol ABNB. We're very confident that you're familiar with Airbnb's business model. This is a platform that connects people that want to stay somewhere with hosts. That's right, Brian. Airbnb has only been publicly traded for a little over a year, but the dynamics of the business go further than that. That's because, obviously, business contracted during the pandemic, and it has since expanded. In fact, over the past 12 months, revenue has grown 65%. And here's what's even more important. During the worst of the pandemic, the company's free cash flow was bleeding out money like crazy. But since then, it has recovered remarkably. In fact, over the last 12 months, Airbnb has generated over $2 billion in free cash flow. Yeah, the numbers are as clear as day. This business is now much stronger and much bigger than it was just a few years ago. But how has it done for investors so far? Well, if we look at the stock since it came public, it's only up about 11%, which isn't terrible, but it's certainly not great either. While I'm not an investor who focuses too much on valuation, I want to point this out. The company's price to free cash flow ratio is sitting at about 46, which is its lowest point just about ever. Now, that's still expensive on a relative basis, but I think it's a pretty good deal. Now, we've talked about Airbnb on this channel before, and this company scores extremely well on both of our investing checklists. That's right, Brian. So when I see a business that's doing better over time, but its stock is falling, I'm excited to add more. All right, Airbnb is stock number one. What is stock number two? Stock number two is Snowflake, a company that trades under the ticker S-N-O-W. Snowflakes is a complex business to understand, but the most important thing to know about this company is that it's involved in the big data market. That's right. You can take your data, you can store it, you can search it, you can analyze it. Basically, you can turn it into functional advice that you can use to improve your business. Now, here's something incredible, Brian. Snowflake, over the past three years, has seen their top line grow more than 10x in just three years. Now, the reason for that is that this is a usage-based model. And clearly, new and existing customers are using Snowflake more and more and more, which is a strong vote of confidence. What's even more exciting to me, Brian, is that Snowflake's gross profit growth has outpaced its revenue growth, which means that margins are rising. That's right. So the business is clearly doing really well. But if we look at the stock since it came public a little over a year ago, that's not the same case. In fact, shares are trading down by about 12%. And if we look at all-time highs, we can get shares of Snowflake for about a 45% discount from where they were in late 2021. Yeah, this is a stock where the numbers look phenomenal, but the stock returns so far have been quite poor. Now, Brian, we should point out that while Snowflake stock is down substantially from its high, it's still trading at a very high valuation. That's right, Brian. Even after you factor in all of that growth, it's trading for 32 times forward sales in no world would that be considered cheap. And by forward sales, that means we're using next year's revenue growth estimate. So on basically any metric that you can look at, Snowflake stock is still extremely expensive. While it is expensive, both you and I agree that this is actually a very high quality business. Absolutely. And this highlights one of the differences in our investment techniques because I don't really focus on valuation. I have no problem going in and buying more shares today. If you want to learn more about how we came up with these scores for Snowflake, click the link you see on your screen. All right, Brian, that's two of the three stocks that you're going to buy, and we're going to cover the third one next. And by the way, it's the one that I am personally the most interested in. Before we do that, we want to give a shout out to our friends at YCharts. So if you've been following our channel for any period of time, you know that we're constantly using YCharts to make complex analysis more visual, intuitive, and shareable. Brian and I have used YCharts for years to do fundamental stock research, but the platform is actually far more powerful than that. It can be used to compare stocks, mutual funds, and ETFs on nearly any metric that you can think of. Paid users can also easily add their own logo to make it easy to distribute via email, blog, newsletter, or on social media. If you're interested in giving YCharts a try for free, visit YCharts.com using the link in our episode description 
or follow them on Twitter at YCharts. All right, Brian, let's get into it. What is stock number three? Stock number three is Pubmatic, a one to $2 billion company that trades under the ticker symbol P-U-B-M. Brian, this is a company that we've covered on our channel before, but remind us, what does this company do? So Pubmatic is a digital advertising company and they're focused on the sell side. What that means is that if you have a blog or a website where you rely on advertising revenue to support yourself, you can use Pubmatic to fill those advertising slots. They're focused on the sell side. You hear us talk a lot about the trade desk, they are more focused on the demand side or those that want to buy those advertising venues. Brian, for such a small company, this company is putting up very strong top line growth. I agree, Brian. And over the last year, which is its entire life as a public company, its top line sales have grown roughly 80%. But here's what's really impressive to me. This is a small company that is aggressively investing in itself, and yet it is still free cash flow positive to the tune of about $50 million over the past year. So strong top line growth, huge growth in free cash flow, and yet this stock has not performed well on the markets. It has not. When it came public, it shot up very high. Everyone was excited about it, but it is down 20% since it came public in late 2020. And if we look at it since its all-time highs, it's actually down more than 65%. Unlike Snowflake and Airbnb, I think there's actually a pretty good argument to be made here that this company's stock is relatively cheap. I agree. I mean, it is free cash flow positive and it's trading for under 30 times free cash flow and under six times sales. Those numbers indicate to me that Wall Street is not pricing this company for extreme growth. And yet this is a company that scored very well on both of our investing checklists. That's right. This is a small company that I think has huge potential. Like you, it's the one that I'm the most excited by and I have no problem going in to buy more shares today. Well, there you have it. Brian's going to be selling his position in DocuSign and using the proceeds to buy Air. Airbnb, Snowflake, and Pubmatic. If you enjoyed this video, give it the thumbs up and let us know in the comment section below. Brian's out.